Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Northridge, and I am your town moderator. I welcome you to the first or deliberative session of the 216th annual meeting of the town of Alton. The second session will be held in conjunction with school elections at this location on March 13th. At that time, we will vote upon the Warren articles that we are today discussing. Our job today is to prepare these Warren articles into their final form for the ballot. Article 1, those running for office, and Articles 2 through 13, zoning articles that have already been through the hearing process by the Planning Board, cannot be amended and will not be discussed this evening. I now declare the deliberative session of the 212th Annual Meeting of the Town of Alton officially open. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now let's meet our head table. On my left and your right are the following town officials who will be introduced by Russ Bailey, town administrator. Russ? They can't hear you, Russ. You're going to have to pull it up closer to you. Either that or come up here. <laughs> to my right is Lisa Noyes, town clerk. Uh, and then next to me here is the town attorney, Jim Sessler, uh, Mr. Dave Hussey, the chairman of the selectmen, Lauren Carr, vice chairman, Sidney Johnson, St uh, Steve McMahon, and Peter Bolster. Thank you, Russ. On my right and your left are the following Alton Budget Committee members who will be introduced by Mark DeCoff, uh, Chairman of the Board. To my right is Steve Miller, Vice Chair, Barbara Howard, Lawrence Tilley, Virgil McDonald, who could not be here with us this evening, and the uh, Town Recorder, Mary. <clears throat> this evening's meeting, meeting could be a lengthy one with 36 articles to be considered. My intent is to complete this meeting this evening. Experience has shown us that we have very poor attendance at a continued meeting. I ask for everyone's cooperation in keeping the meeting moving. The moderator's rules for this meeting are, one, the moderator will not follow Robert's rules. The moderator will use the following general rules of procedure, whose main purpose is to keep the meeting moving and not get bogged down in procedural quagmires. Two, by majority vote, the voters can overrule any decision that the moderator makes and any rule that the moderator establishes. A voter can raise such a request as a point of order. The moderator will take articles in the order they appear on the warrant unless he announces the intent to take them out of order. After an article is read, a motion must be made and seconded prior to any discussion of the article. The names of those making and seconding the motion will be required. The moderator will then ask for someone to speak in favor of the article and then open discussion to both pro and con. The moderator will allow only one motion on the floor at a time with the exception of points of order, a motion to amend the pending article by the person who has the floor, or a motion to move the question by a person who has the floor. No one may speak unless they are recognized by the moderator and have the floor with the exception of points of order. Everyone who speaks must use the microphone. Please stop by using your name. Be aware that the meeting is being videotaped for future replay on public access television, channel 26. All amendments to a motion must be in writing. Motions to move the question limit debate and require a two-thirds vote. Non-voters of the town of Alton may not speak at the meeting without the permission of the voters except the moderator will allow non-resident town and school officials and consultants or experts who are here to provide information about the article to speak. All speakers must be courteous. The moderator will not allow personal attacks or inappropriate language. If you are out of order, you will be warned once. If you persist, you will be assisted from the building by the police officer in attendance. 
All questions and comments should be addressed to the moderator. The moderator will choose who responds to the questions. With the exception of initial presentations on articles, which the moderator requests are limited to 10 minutes, all speakers in debate will be limited to three minutes. Each speaker may only speak once until everyone has spoken. Voting will be done by a show of cards. If in the opinion of the moderator the result is inconclusive, a standing vote will be taken. A secret ballot will be used when required by statute or when requested by five voters present at the meeting during or at the end of debate on the article. A motion to reconsider may be made after a vote has been taken and must be made by someone who voted on the prevailing side. A motion to restrict reconsideration of an article may be made after a vote has been taken. The moderator may vote on all articles, however this moderator will only vote to break a tie. As we have in the past, I will call, call upon David Hussey, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, to give a State of the Town message. David. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, and Budget Committee members and selectmen, and fellow citizens. Can everyone hear you? You're about a foot taller than I am. Yeah, yeah. How does this move up? Let's try this. I can speak It is my honor to report to the people of Alton with the state of our town address. We are fortunate to live here in this beautiful town in the best state in the U.S. I will be as brief as possible with the update on the town. People have asked them about our tax rate. Ours is one of the lowest in the area at 13.07. And yet we provide all necessary services our citizens need. And we have no bonded debt. As selectmen, our commitment is about the town and the citizens, and our focus is working towards a common purpose. To this end, we have set our goals with that in mind. I am happy to report to you during the coming year, we will continue to make improvements to our infrastructure and town buildings. In 2012, we will resume our sidewalk project to make them safer. Also, renovations to our town buildings are ongoing, with improvements being made to the town hall and the museum. You will also see ongoing work to refurbish our facilities at the bay, including the water bandstand, which is 84 years old. The water bandstand is used as a non-lateral marker buoy for the New Hampshire Marine Patrol as a navigational aid for boaters. I would like to acknowledge we appreciate Parker Marine for maintaining the seasonal lighting on the building. We have successfully, successfully completed new additions for the senior center, ongoing work on the fire station and the police station. Other projects for 2012 include road reconstruction and work at the transfer station. On such large projects of this magnitude, we go out to bid, seek grants and fundraising and other resources to save but not to skimp on the quality of work. Excellent examples of this fundraising efforts for the Senior Center and the B&M Railroad Park and the volunteers who came forward with their expertise. The board certainly appreciates the work of all who participate in these projects. A milfoil committee has been established and will remain vigilant and maintain in protecting our water resources. And this past year, a drainage problem has been corrected at East Side Beach on 28A, and including a new retaining wall. Other projects this past year include the reconstruction of the historic Places Mill Bridge. Much work went into planning, engineering, and coordinating with New Hampshire DOT and residents. There is now a safe bridge 
which should last for many years. After tropical uh, storm Irene passed through last year, major we sustained major da damages to the Reed Road Bridge over the West Alton Brook. The damage was substantial, requiring us to act quickly. Although the bridge has been in initial planning stages for replacement, deterioration from the storm happened quickly during the high water and the road had to be posted for passenger vehicle owners. We then worked diligently on a design with our engineers to ensure a temporary single lane bridge would be built to allow passage for utility and emergency uh, vehicles. Fortunately, Mother Nature gave us a mild start to the winter and the concrete and the roadway have been paved and allowed full passage within a short period of time. Thanks to the efforts of New Hampshire DOT, CLD Consulting Engineers, E.D. Sweat, Weaver Brothers Construction Crews, Minchie Brothers, also Stony Ridge Environments, and let's not forget the Highway Department. <clears throat> Both phases of construction are now complete. It is our responsibility to maintain efficiently efficiency of our town departments, <coughs> excuse me, and to ensure that any problems will be resolved in a manner as not to impact the budget if possible. Our aim is to work cooperatively to explore all options in the best interest of the town. We have been creative, for instance, use equipment rather than new, opting to rent equipment rather than purchase. Our town is fortunate to have dedicated citizens, including our students and employees, who are willingly volunteer their time to our nonprofit agencies. We thank them. We thank the Garden Club for their beautification efforts, and we thank the Historical Society for the preservation work on all its treasures and artifacts. These are the things that the selectmen hear from visitors and residents who made positive comments. As we go into 2012, we are looking to keep a balanced budget, rev revising old zoning laws to keep our goals, to stay in focus with our efforts to keep our office transparent, to strive for ways to improvements and work together towards efficiency and service of our town people. I would like to say a few words about Selectman Pat Fuller, who unexpectedly passed away in July. Her manner and expertise in our municipal affairs was an inspiration for many. Pat had nine years tenure in, on the board of Selectman and witness, was never shy of expressing her opinion and was an advocate of the causes she believed in. During her time as Selectman, her experience was influential. She was determined to stand firm against anything that would undermine our municipality, such as House Bill for Donor Towns, which included all. Her unexpected death caused us to fill her position, and we appointed Sidney Johnson until March 2012. Again, we want to express our condolences to the Fuller family, and we want to acknowledge the death of Claire Fitzgerald, an energetic lady who contributed much to our town. Both will be missed. One other acknowledgement I would like to make is Steve McMahon. This is his fourth term and 12 years serving the community, and I think he should be commended. Thank you, Steve. And in closing, I encourage you to go to the polls next month and encourage others to register to vote. Encourage you to volunteer on all boards and committees. Encourage you to attend meetings of the selectmen, zoning board, planning board, and other public meetings. All of you have a say in our town government operations. Thank you. Scott Simons, could I ask you to come up to the mic?
an acknowledgement of his going beyond and above of his work projects. We're giving Scott a, uh, a uh, an award or our thanks. And Loring, will you please present it? Uh, we'll have a, a budget message uh, from Mark to Clough. I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. I'd like to uh, thank the Board of Selectmen and especially uh, Lauren Carr, who sat through every uh, budget meeting for both the town and the school. I'd like to thank the town manager for what he did. I'd like to thank all the department heads who managed a very well, managed a default budget very well. And I'd like to uh, thank everybody on the Board of Selectmen for uh, giving me their support. This was my uh, first year as budget chair, and this will be my last year on the budget committee. Thank you. Two hundred and twelve deliberative meeting in town elections. You are hereby notified to meet at Prospect Mountain High School on Wednesday, the 8th day of February in the year 2012, beginning at 7 o'clock in the evening, for the purpose of deliberating upon the following Warren Articles and the town elections to approve the Warren Articles by ballot vote, which will be held on March 13, 2012, at Prospect Mountain High School from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now let's turn to Article 14. Article 14, to see if the town will vote to establish a capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35 colon 1 for the purposes of funding for police vehicle capital reserve and to raise and appropriate $32,000 to, place, to be placed into the fund. This sum, 32,000, to come from DEA asset forfeiture funds <coughs> and no amount to be raised from taxation. Also to vote to appoint the selectmen as agents to expend from the police ve vehicle capital reserve. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen five to zero and the budget committee five to zero. Uh, who moves the motion? Mr. Carr, second. Second. Mr. Huzzy. Uh, who'd care to speak in favor of the motion? Mr. Carr. As you'll, as you'll see, this is for a uh, capital reserve for future purchases of a police vehicle. We are uh, also taking advantage of the DEA asset forfeiture funds to fund this vehicle, and it's pretty much self-explanatory. Is there any discussion on the article? Yes, sir, please state your name. Dave St. Cyr, uh, quick question. Is there any intention to purchase this vehicle under this particular budget this year? Uh, we are going to uh, evaluate the vehicles as they age. The mileage on some of the vehicles right now uh, range up from 155,000 miles to 138,000 miles, our two top uh, vehicles. So we're going to evaluate them as they age. If we don't need them, we won't spend the money. Okay, and my next question would fall on that as well. If this is the case, and if you by chance purchase this vehicle this year, is there in fact money in the budget already to support it? I mean, did the police department put this money in, uh, in anticipation that we're going to give them the authorization to have the money to buy the vehicle? Or is, again, is there money in the budget to support this vehicle? No, that's what this article will do. It'll put money in so we can purchase the vehicle. There isn't money in the budget. No, I didn't say purchase the vehicle. I said maintain it. Yes, yes. to maintain 
Yes, there is to maintain vehicles, yes. There is money in the budget for this vehicle specifically if we in fact, or if you in fact, buy this vehicle. I, I couldn't hear you. Could you repeat that? I said, is there money in this budget right now to support the maintenance of this vehicle if you in fact decide to purchase it? Yes. Sounds like it's a little premature to a, to a certain extent if you ask me that you've got money, you're, you're fully expecting this vehicle to come across and you've already provided for the maintenance of it. I don't know. The, the, the maintenance of the vehicle is an estimate that we use every year. It will be spent as needed. It's an estimate that we use. It's uh, not been predetermined on the maintenance of this vehicle before we buy it. Any further discussion on Article 14? I'd just like to ask a yes. question. Uh, Mr. Carr, this is to, re if you were to purchase a vehicle, it would be to replace a vehicle, not to add to the fleet, correct? We are trying to have this, if this vehicle is purchased, the DRA funds have to be for a new vehicle. We uh, anticipate to take one of the old vehicles you redefine that as a traffic control vehicle so that we won't run the brand new vehicles to have them sit there run for the traffic control. So it will add to the fleet, but it's to adding to the fleet will hopefully cut down the mileage or the idling of these other vehicles. Thank you. Thank also, you. also the new vehicle will be under warranty that will help also on the maintenance. Any additional discussion on Article 14? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 14? I'll move that. We have moved by Mr. Carr, second. second. Mr. Hussey? Second. Uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 14, please raise your cards. All opposed? Article 14 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 15, to see if the town will vote to establish a capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35 colon 1 for the purposes of fuel, gasoline, diesel, heating oil, kerosene, and propane overage coverage for all town departments and to raise and appropriate $10,000 to be placed into the fund. Also to vote to appoint the selectmen as agents to expend from the fuel overage fund. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen five to zero and the budget committee five to zero. Who moves the motion? Mr. Mann. Second. Mr. Bolster. Uh, who'd care to speak in favor of the article? Most of you know that the uh cost of fuel is very, very difficult to predict uh, between now and the end of next year. And therefore, uh, and we are in this sense uh, kind of following the lead of the school board that did this a few years ago, that established a, uh, a reserve fund to basically deal with the overage so that we don't have to budget the worst case scenario, uh, budget a, a, a high figure and then end up uh, not spending it. This way we can budget a figure that is, is more realistic as to what we can have some crystal ball of figuring out what it's going to be, but then be in the situation if we run short, we have this, this money, and then this money would then, if it's not spent in this year, could then just carry over uh, for next year uh, as uh, a continuation of this uh, capital reserve fund. So we have a way to, uh, to cushion uh, the uh, radical changes in gas, which you're already seeing happening right now in the last month or so, and so we want to be prepared for that, but not budget more than we need to. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 15? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 15? Mr. McMahon, second. Mr. Bolster, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 15, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 15 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 16, 
to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $45,000 to be placed into the Town Hall Building Improvement Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen 5-0 and the Budget Committee 5-0. Who moves the article? Mr. Bolster, second. Mr. Johnson, uh, who'd care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Carr. Again, this is an article we started last year to uh, address some of the issues in the town hall. Um, as you probably have noticed, we've uh, installed a glass entrance way that's helped tremendously with the heat. You notice it right off in the hall. We also don't have the leaves blowing in like we used to. Um, we also have plans. Our boiler is quite old. We're having trouble with a lot, a lot of maintenance problems with that. Also, the zones are not very well regulated. Some of them upstairs are also connected to the ones downstairs. The lift we tried to fix, unfortunately, we found out they no longer make that lift. So the paths are difficult or impossible to get. We had estimated $30,000. Then quotes to come in were way over that. So that still has got to be addressed. And we also are looking at areas of cleaning up and using the basement for storage area. The architect, uh, a few years ago, when they did the energy audit on the building, said that the walls ought to be insulated, the bricks ought to be sealed on the outside, and we also have roof shingles that are getting toward the end of their age. So we ask you to support this so we can continue with some of these projects. Thank you. Any further discussion? Name for us, please. Uh, David St. Cyr. Do you need to have voter approval to spend this money? Or, and I noticed that this one here, the, the language is different from the, from the previous two, to vote in and appoint the selectmen as agents to spend these funds. How is that handled? This is an existing capital reserve, and when it was officially established last year, it named the selectmen agents, so you don't have to repeat that part. Okay, I, just, I was just curious if it, if it took the uh, selectmen to, to be able yes, to spend it. Yes, the selectmen it. have the authority to spend okay, it. Okay, that's all I want to know. Any further discussion on Article 16? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 16? Mr. Bolster, second. Mr. Johnson? Um, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 16, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 16 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 17, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to the Police Department Building Improvement Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen and at five to zero, and the budget committee six to zero. Who moves the motion? Mrs. Johnson, second. second. Mr. Carr, who'd care to speak in favor of the article? Mrs. Johnson. The current balance in the building improvement fund for the police station is $74,913. Those funds will be exhausted upon the completion of this particular phase. Some of the items that the chief found that needed to be desperately taken care of were inadequate office space, a lack of private interview room space, limited space to separate adult offenders from juvenile offenders, a lack of evidence storage space, lack of file storage, and an inadequate HVAC system. All of these items Immediate items have been addressed through phase one, and at the end of this, the funds will be exhausted from this account. This $25,000 is to replenish this fund for future needs of the police department, and we ask for your support in doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 17? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 17? Mr. Johnson, second. Second. Mr. Carr, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 17, raise your cards, please. 
All opposed? Article 17 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 18, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $7,500 for the purpose of revising and updating the personnel and policy manual. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 semicolon 7 VI and will not lapse until completed or by December 31st, 2013. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen 5 to 0 and the Budget Committee 5 to 0. Who moves the article? Move Mr. Carr. Second. Second, Mr. Huzzy. Uh, who cares to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Huzzy. <clears throat> this article goes along with our current, current outlook on laws we cannot defend and complicated regulations and outdated zoning laws. This one here is particular on our policies. Um, <clears throat> we, are, we are taking a very close look at the personal and policy manual. It needs to be updated and revised. This will give us an unbiased and a fresh look at the policies. And that is why we are asking for this money. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 18? Jeffrey St. Cyr, can you explain how the $7,500 is going to be expended for this purpose? Is it going to go I'm, to... I'm sorry, I could not hear you. Get a little closer, Jeffrey. Can you explain how this $7,500 is going to be expended? Is this going to go towards legal fees for a lawyer to review the town policy manual? Is it going to be paid to the local government center for their expertise? Is it going to be to pay employees over time to take this responsibility on? How do you anticipate the $7,500 being spent? Uh, we will probably have a consultant help us with the policies. And my, my follow-up question would be, why, why isn't this something that cannot be done within the town of Alton? I know we have employees, that we have the town administrator, we have people that work in the town hall, we have selectmen that set town policy. Uh, why can't this be done in-house, and why do we have to spend $7,500 to go outside? Well, as you know, it has come up. Uh, many people have brought up that we should be taking a look at all our policies. I was looking at having somebody with a fresh pair of eyes and an unbiased look to look at these policies. Has the town considered uh, maybe be looking for a group of volunteers in town who might be able to provide this information? I bet you might be able to find some citizens here today who might volunteer to serve on a committee to, which would provide a fresh set of eyes uh, to the town policies, therefore not necessarily having to spend $7,000 to accomplish the same thing. I'd be willing to volunteer. Uh, I know I've looked at some of the town policies as well, but I don't think we necessarily need to spend $7,500 for an expert to come in and tell us something that we can already do on our own. Thank you for your input. You Any further discussion? Mr. Miller. The proper way to do this is to hire an independent contractor, a specialist, give that specialist personnel constraints how you want to run your town and your person and your personnel policy, and then they provide the legal product. That's the best. That's the most efficient way to uh, to do this, as opposed to having laymen uh, uh, essentially set policy that ends up being challenged in court. Thank you, and Mr. Bolster. I basically kind of kind of want to uh, second what Mr. Miller just said. Um, the, uh, this is a very much more complicated process than it might, might seem. It deals with labor law. It deals a lot of, with a lot of uh, very complicated issues um, in personnel. Uh, these changes won't automatically be put into place by the consultant. Consultant will suggest these, uh, these changes to the, to the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Selectmen uh, with consultation with uh, with the employees and others 
and our town administrator will finally uh, revise this uh, uh, personnel manual. But we feel that it's always important to get the best advice uh, on a very complicated issue having to do with labor law and other policies uh, so that we can do the best job we can. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 18? I so move. Mr. Carr, second. Mr. Huzzy. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of 18, please raise your cards. All opposed? Article 18 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 19, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 to be added to the sidewalk capital reserve as previously established for the upgrade and maintenance of existing sidewalks. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen five to zero and the budget committee five to zero. Uh, who moves the motion? Mr. Huzzy, second. Mr. McMahon, who can to speak in favor? Mr. Bolster. This last year we uh, did some important work uh, in front of the of the town hall and replaced the sidewalk there. Uh, but um, the sidewalks throughout our downtown village area are in great need of repair. And we've been done a little bit over, over the years. We had a, uh, worn articles that were going in each year. One got defeated a, a couple of years ago. And so we kind of slowed down. Uh, right now, there are there is about uh, there's fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars in our capital reserve fund, and another four thousand dollars in a couple of special funds uh, that were given to the town for that purpose uh, over the years. Uh, with this additional ten thousand dollars, this will give us nearly thirty thousand dollars, and our plan is this year, depending on how far this money can can be stretched, is to uh, improve the sidewalk uh, from. Uh, in front of uh, the uh, Buchanan Real Estate uh, to, the, to the bank, uh, across the street, and then uh, create a sidewalk which has never been there in front of the Main Street Cafe uh, to Barnes Avenue, uh, which would then give us a complete sidewalk, and we're hoping, our plan is right now, to do it uh, the right way and do granite curbing uh, along the road and along the sidewalk and we're kind of debating, uh, we can stretch it farther by doing blacktop than we could by concrete, and we can do more sidewalk, and so that's still kind of up in the air and will be a part of our, uh, uh, our ongoing dis uh, discussion. So with $30,000, we're hoping to create a link with a brand new sidewalk that we got from the Circle Project and, and connect it all the way uh, to Town Hall and then we may have a couple of other small projects that uh, are on, on the uh, edge that we might be able to do to really make our sidewalks in our downtown area uh, very appropriate and easy to clean and to keep uh, the ice off them uh, and also very attractive. Thank you. Mr. Longabaugh. I, I have a proposed uh, amendment. Do you want to read it, Bob, or do you want me to? I'll, I'll start it, and then you, you'll read it, the whole thing. Uh, all all I uh, serve to do here is to amend the, the dollar figure from 10000 to 20000 So I move that amendment. OK, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a second? Uh, Mr. Miller, right here. Uh, go ahead, Bob, tell what you're. I was watching the January 9th uh, selections meeting, and during public in the first public input, Ruth Arsenault came to the microphone and questioned the selectman about the, uh, this very article and the sum of money, and she wanted to increase it, but it was too late, except at the deliberative session. Ruth said she was representing a bunch of senior seniors that oh, don't go out at night. And she couldn't be here tonight, so I ca called her and said, I'll, on your behalf, I'll enter the amendment. Uh, so, and I certainly go, go along with Peter. It's kind of a joke around town that Mary B. and Bob Longenbaugh, those old geezers, it takes them 37 minutes to do their half hour walk. And so we indeed have experienced the sidewalks, but we would particularly like that, that rail trail that, that went in. Uh, that's a very pleasant walk there. So 
uh, that's my case. I think we'll get the sidewalks done faster if we have more money in it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on Article 19? Then we'll vote uh, the amendment. The amendment is to change the dollar amount on Article 19 from $10,000 to $20,000. All in favor of the amendment, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Uh, that appears to be a positive vote, and so the amendment passes. Any additional discussion on Article 19? I move to restrict. We have a motion uh, from Mr. Hussey to restrict reconsideration. <coughs> Mr. McMahon, you have a second? All in favor of restricting Article 19 as amended, please play, raise your cards. All opposed? Article 19 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 20, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 to be added to the Landfill Closure Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. These funds are being used to deal with the contamination at the landfill and to meet the state regulatory requirements. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen 5 to 0 and the budget committee 5 to 0. Who moves the motion? Mr. McMahon, second. Mr. Bolster. Who would care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Carr. Again, this is a ongoing issue. We um, have just received word from the state that they are requiring two new additional wells to monitor which uh, we have an estimate of about $24,000 for those two wells. Plus on top of the regular testing we have to do of the current monitoring wells. So this is, will be a uh, thing that's gonna come in front of you until the problem solved up there. Any discussion on Article 20? Yes, sir. Yes, Dave St. Cyr. Where are those two additional wells going in? They'll, they'll be uh, toward the entrance, uh, the road on the entrance to the dump, to the landfill. Okay. Does that, and I asked this question last year, I believe, what provisions are being made for the potential contamination flow downhill to trash side and uh, the other areas, of those residential areas that are down there? Uh, are we still dealing with, quote unquote, alleged that the water doesn't flow over, or are we starting to move the water down the hill? Right now, the, what we have now, the, what the plume is not moving in that direction, it's moving to, on the Dahl property. They've asked for these other two wells to see if there is any problems. Right now, we don't have any indication that it's going in that direction. So, but the Dahl property is on the other side of the dump. You're saying you're putting them over by the entrance. Uh, it seems like it's just the opposite side of where you're finding contamination now. Again, is that an indication potentially that contamination is going to start heading downhill, down 28A? The engineers have determined right now the plume is going on toward the Dahl property. They have not any indication, but the state is asked to put two wells to verify that there isn't any going in that direction, and that's what these two wells will do. Okay, so that leads me to believe that, that, that if there's an indication that the contamination is flowing that way once they drill these no, wells. No, that is not. It is, this is to check and make sure there's no indication. This is just to check that they're requiring more wells to, to see if that is happening. Okay, I get There's no indication to that. Let me revise my, my statement then. If it is found that, through the addition of these two wells, that it appears as though the the contamination may be moving down 28A. What provisions are in the plan to monitor all the well water, because we're all on uh, drilled wells down there, to uh, lay aside the potential or to confirm the potential that there might be contamination flowing downhill? That would be, if the wells indicate that, then the, our consultant with the state would have to Tell us what plans to put in. That would be after this is found, if that is a problem. It would be the state and our engineer that would then tell us what has to be done. Okay, thank you. 
Any further discussion on Article 20? Do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 20? Mr. McMahon, a second. Mr. Bolster. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 20, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 20 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 21, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 to be placed in a benefit pay expendable trust fund as previously established. Said funds are recommended by the town auditors to be used to pay for benefits accrued by town employees and redeemed when they leave employment with the town of Alton in accordance with the town personnel policy. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen 5 to 0 and the Budget Committee 5 to 0. Who moves the motion? Mr. Bolster. Second, Mrs. Johnson. Who care to speak for the motion? Hey? Uh, this is an annual article that covers for when an employee retires. Um, uh, within the personnel policy. Uh, we have 15000 now in the account. We know of one senior person, and I'm not going to name them, who has informed us they will be retiring. Uh, and then anytime we have unexpected retirements, um, then it hits into this account. So we know that we will be depleted on what we have, so we need to add the additional fifteen to cover uh, the, the future. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 21? Hearing a seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 21? Mr. Bolster, second. <coughs> Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 21, please raise your cards. All opposed? Article 21 is restricted regarding reconsideration. <coughs> Article 22, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $35,000 to be added to the Building and Site Improvement Capital Reserve for the transfer station, which also includes the EPA stormwater management implementation requirements. The appropriation is re recommended by the selectmen five to zero and by the Budget Committee, 5-0. to zero. Who moves the motion? Mrs. Johnson, second. Second. Mr. Carr, who would care to speak in favor of the motion? Mrs. Johnson. As part of the Solid Waste Center five-year plan, they are looking to expand the metal and construction demolition drop-off area. Uh, in addition to this, they're requesting a roof be installed over the drop-off area to keep precipitation out of containers. We do pay by the ton for disposal of this waste, so any rain or snow does add weight to this, which then creates an additional cost to the town. In addition, the roof will put us in compliance with federal storm water regulation. This project will be done in phases, and phase one will consist of a detention basin berm planting of shrubbery, half of the concrete structure for recycling of C and D, metal tires, and asphalt shingles. Um, we currently have a balance in this account of 18129 We do use a combination of the money raised at town meeting along with <coughs> revenue received from uh, recyclables from the Solid Waste Center to fund these projects. Any questions? Any further discussion? Any questions? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 22? Mr. Johnson? Second? Second. Mr. Carr? All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 22, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 22 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 23, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $12,000 to be added to the Recreation Grounds Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. The purpose of this Capital Reserve Fund is to fund maintenance equipment for the grounds, 
sidewalks, buildings, and parks. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectman 5-0 and the Budget Committee 5-0. Who moves the article? Move Mr. Carr. Second. Second. Mr. Hussey. Who'd care to speak in favor of Article 23? Mrs. Johnson. The money raised from this article will be used to purchase a zero-turn mower at an approximate cost of $9,000. The mower will have a bag attachment for an additional $1,800, so the total cost of this would be $10,800. The zero-turn mower will be used to mow and maintain the grounds at all of the buildings, parks and recreation, and public facilities. This new mower will be replacing the X585JD tractor. The balance in the capital reserve fund is currently $15,659. Any additional money put into this fund will be put in place for future pur purchases and maintenance on existing equipment. Thank you. Any questions? Discussion? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 23? Mr. Carr, second. Mr. Hussey. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 23? Raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 23 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 24, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for the purpose of improving the Alton Bay restrooms to meet current ADA accessibility standards and by siding the exterior. Appropriation recommended by the Selectman 5-0 and the Budget Committee 5-0. Who moves the motion? Mr. Hussey, second. Mr. McMahon, uh, who'd care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Hussey. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have to um, meet current ADA accessibility standards, and the siding is deteriorating. We need to uh, replace that in the bay uh, for, the, for the bathrooms. Uh, general maintenance, this money is needed to do all. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Longaboy has a question. Uh, is this for the east side restroom, the west side, or both? I'm sorry, Mr. Longboy. Is this for the east side restroom, the west side of the uh, bay, or both? Both. Uh, additional discussion? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 24? Mr. Hussey? Second? Mr. McMahon? All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 24, raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 24 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 25, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be added to the Milfoil Capital Reserve Fund. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectman 5-0 and the Budget Committee 5-0. Who moves the article? Mr. Bolster, second. Mr. McMahon. We'd care to speak in favor of the article. Mr. Bolster. I don't know if there are any members of the uh, <coughs> Milford Committee here this evening. If there are, could somebody raise their hands? Uh, anybody that are members of the Milford Committee? Uh, uh, Kelly Trendle is the staff for that committee. Uh, and they've been working uh, very hard over the last almost three years now. Uh, a committee uh, established by the selectmen about three years ago uh, to look at the issue of milfoil, the ongoing issue, uh, on the lake and in the uh, in, in possibly in some of the big lake and also some of the possibly some of the other small lakes and the rivers. They've been doing a fantastic job. Uh, Jonathan Downing had been the chairman of that committee for the last couple of years, and now there is a new chairman. Uh, and uh, they, last year, did a uh, very thorough uh, job of pulling uh, the milfoil at the end of the bay uh, and up the Merry Meeting River. Uh, they were able to get an awful lot of it pulled because ultimately, even if you use herbicide, it's a very safe herbicide that's been established uh, by the University of New Hampshire, 
uh, to the point that New Hampshire really is the leading uh, state in the area of milfoil treatment in the country. A lot of innovative uh, uh, types of work has been done uh, to deal with that in our state. A lot of very important work was done. However, the reality of milfoil is it is a never-ending story. Uh, it is not something that you do once and, okay, we've got that taken care of and it won't happen again. As long as boats come into the lake with little pieces of milfoil hanging to their propellers and they dropped, that milfoil can go down and seed itself and it can grow almost in 20 feet of water. The bulbs on the milfoil are, are bigger than two grapefruit. And they're, they're huge bulbs, and they, they are not destroyed by the, uh, by the ice or the cold water, and they just continue to proliferate. We do have areas that still need a lot of work, and so this $20,000, and one of the things that is pretty definite about this board, about our select board, is the issue of the maintenance of the quality of water and quality of the, of the water in the lake is very paramount. It is not a ideological issue, a political issue on this board. Uh, we passed a couple of uh, ordinances here just recently having to do with more stringent uh, regulations with regard to septic systems uh, along the lake, uh, more than what the state requires. And the milfoil issue is a very, very important thing because the tax base of this town and the quality of life of this town depends upon the quality of this lake. And so uh, we are putting forward $20,000. That will be matched with some money from the state. Those of you that are boaters, uh, whenever you buy your boat registration, $7.50 of that boat registration goes into the milfoil fund, which is then uh, granted to towns uh, as the money is available uh, to go along with the, the money that the towns uh, allocate. A year or so ago, we asked various individuals to make contribution to the Milfoil Fund, and they were very generous. Most of the marinas and many people living along the, uh, the lake uh, were very generous in coming forward with some money to help us. Uh, this year, we feel that the $20,000 that's put in the budget will, will continue this effort which may be an ongoing effort over the years, and hopefully maybe in other years we won't have to put so much in once we get a real hold uh, on this issue. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 25? Yes, sir. I noticed that the, the treatment fund, in terms of the milfoil treatment program, basically had $17,380 in it during last year. Uh, or excuse me, it had $17,000. $17,380 was spent. Uh, what did that go for in terms of the $17,000 that leaves you a balance now of roughly $123? It went, it went for the process that if you notice at the lake, was a process uh, that is, we, we hired a company to come in to basically use uh, suction uh, equipment that would be down on the bottom. They would send divers down, pull the, the herbicide, uh, pull the uh, milfoil, and it would go into this vacuum pump and come to the surface. This means that they can do about four to five times as much work in, in the same amount of time that if somebody has to go down and come up, go down and come up. This is a, this is a, a standard process uh, that, again, is kind of state-of-the-art uh, in the country that's been developed by New Hampshire, this equipment, and that's what this money went for. I would just make one comment in this case. With my experience with milfoil, pro milfoil program in the state of Maine, whenever I take my boat to a public launch in the state of Maine, somebody is there to inspect it before I put it in the water. And on a couple of occasions, they have found milfoil residue on my boat. And the only other place I put it is here in the lake. My comment would be that it would be seem to me as beneficial to have an inspection program prior to boats going in the water before such time is it you know obviously we've already had the problem but part of this program the money should go towards the inspection of boats where we have such a proliferation of boats from outside the area that end up going in the lake that to me are more the problem than the, than the solution of pulling 
and sucking up milfoil because you're just spending good money after bad as far as I'm concerned. We have had a program at the town boat launch for the last two summers uh, that's been funded by the, uh, uh, the Lakes Association uh, grant uh, and uh, one of the, the, the lady that was down there this year, Pan Martin, is sitting here and she can raise her hand. Uh, Amelia Sweezy uh, was the person that did the job the year before that. Uh, they're not there uh, a huge number of hours because of the amount of money that, that's available. It is, a, it is a process in which most of our marinas, and we have marina owners here, at the, at the marinas, they are taking a very strong effort at educating their people uh, and, and checking the boats at the marinas. They're working very hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. And also at the public boat launches, we would like to have as much, uh, we have to have somebody there all the time, but, but we can't afford that. There are signs that are posted at all of the boat launches anywhere in town, even though they're not manned, ex explaining to people about mail for what it looks like, and for people to do self-inspection. So that is, be, is, is an effort that's very important. Uh, the prevention is as important as the correction. Any additional discussion on Article 25? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion? to restrict reconsideration of Article 25. Mr. McMahon, the second. Mr. Bolster, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 25, raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 25 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 26, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to be added to the Senior Center Pearson Road Capital Reserve Fund. Appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen 5 to 0 and the Budget Committee 5 to 0. Who moves the article? Mr. Bolster, second. Mr. Johnson. Um, Who'd care to speak in favor of the motion? Mr. Bolster. On Friday at 10 o'clock, we would very much uh, invite all of you to come and see the results of phase one at the Senior Center. Uh, this is a almost, well not groundbreaking, because we've done this with the library, we've done this with the uh, downtown redevelopment, the railroad park, and a number of other projects that have been embarked upon by this town with a shared pu public-private effort to produce some improvements uh, to our town. The selectmen about a year ago uh, selected a committee to work at planning the possibility of fundraising uh, for, with private money to move the, the senior center project along. Uh, that happened. We began uh, work in September uh, on the phase one of the senior center. It is done. Even the new tables are going to arrive tomorrow. Uh, at, the, uh, at, at, at the center. And just to give you an idea, right now, as of now, $55,000 has been raised by contributions, private contributions from the community, uh, in-kind contributions, and uh, a tremendous amount of volunteer work on finishing the building. Approximately $52,000 of town money that had been allocated and uh, established uh, in the past uh, went to, has been raised. We now have $5,000 left over after phase one is done towards phase two. Uh, and with this Warren article of $30,000, we probably are going to need, and the volunteer help, and that sort of thing that we can get from contractors and individual citizens and this sort of thing, uh, we're probably going to need to raise about another $50,000 for phase two, which is a 36 by 36 addition to the present building, which will basically create a building that probably can seat us at dinner uh, probably 125 people and about 175 at a, at a meeting, and new, uh, 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 new parking lot area, uh, parking for about 75 to 100 cars, and it will be a building that will not just be for the seniors, it will be a building for the whole town that we can be very proud of. Uh, and uh, so uh, one of the things that is, is very important here is this has put us really on the map in terms of senior citizen uh, facilities. Towns all around are very jealous of Alton right now. 
the seniors in other towns are saying, well, wait a minute, Alton has got this wonderful senior center, and it's going to get better and better, uh, and uh, it's something we can be very proud of, and we can honor our seniors who have been a part of our community for many years, and uh, Amy Braun, who is the director there, has takes a great deal of the it uh, deserves a great deal of the credit for making this center the center and the program that it is uh, through the CAP program. And so we're asking for $30,000 to go into that fund again this year. Now, I'm hoping that we can continue. There may be a fellow down in front here that may be making a motion, and I'm not quite sure about that motion because I think what we have shown to people in the community and around the area is that people in this town, if given the opportunity, will step up and do something that really benefits and improves the town. And I want that to keep going. And I want that challenge to continue to go out there uh, without depending just on tax money uh, to, uh, to fund this building. Uh, but uh, whatever motion this gentleman in front makes, uh, I will have to decide whether I'm gonna vote for it or not. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Longabaugh is not making a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just, see, uh, I can't say I'm confused because I'm, un, I'm uninformed. Uh, but I'd like to, to know, at the present rate, uh, when will we be able to do the extension? Now, I'm very anxious to move the polls from this uh, lovely auditorium, but it's very user-unfriendly on Election Day to put the polls at the expanded senior center. Well, number one, that's not a foregone conclusion, but it will be a, it will be a possibility, okay? That would have to be something that would have to be discussed uh, uh, by the board and others. The hope is, and we got this part done, the hope is that by next year this time, we will be having the dedication for phase two. Now, that all depends on whether or not we can raise about another $50,000 in private funds and in-kind contribution and volunteer labor. Uh, that's around the figure that we possibly are going to need in addition to, uh, to this item. The more help that we can get with construction, uh, with doing some of the more uh, uh, the framing and, and putting on the roof and things like that, which we have to pay for, have done this time, uh, and we've got some indication that a lot of that there are contractors out there that are very willing to step up and help us as long as, as well as people that are rank amateurs that can slop paint on someplace uh, and and then clean it up afterwards. Uh, and uh, but that would help us to make it possible. My hope is that with this money that we have here and the continued effort and the wonderful publicity we get from the Baysider. Uh, that uh, uh, we will begin to continue to get the money that we need to make this happen. And I'd really like to see us stretch as individuals not to depend on tax money to get this done, but to do it uh, and be even more proud of what we've done. We now have approximately 200 people that have given money, have provided volunteer labor uh, in terms of this project already. Over 200 people have come forward to make this uh, happen as we are now. Any further discussion on Article 26? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 26? Mr. Bolster? Second? Mr. Johnson? All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 26, please raise your cards. Those opposed? Article 26 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 27. Shall the town raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, <coughs> the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $6,169,810. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be 6 million. $215,600, which is the same as last year, with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Alton or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, 
X and XVI to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. The appropriation is recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4 to 0 and the Budget Committee 6 to 0. This article does not include special or individual articles addressed. Who moves the motion? Mrs. Johnson, second. second. Mr. Carr, who speak in favor? Mr. Carr. Uh, the Budget Committee, uh, excuse me, the Selectmen uh, will yield to the Budget Committee's amount. Any discussion? This year we uh, went like usual line by line through the budget. We're uh, basically 0.3% over last year's budget, which is $19,050. We'd asked the, uh, we brought a lot of the lines into the actual cost. And then the, uh, one, the department that really got hit was the police department because we asked for any vacancies and there was one there, so we took advantage of that. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Question. question I have. State by state in your name. David St. Cyr. Question I have is, I'm looking at a line here, 4153, legal expenses. What in the devil is costing us $136,000 in legal fees? Would you please explain that? Mr. Carr? A large, a large amount of that was personnel issues this year we had to address. I won't even go into it. Thank you. Any further discussion of Article 27? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 27? Yes. Mrs. Johnson, second. Mr. Carr. All in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 27, raise your cards, please. All opposed? Article 27 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 28, the CFT Town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $134,748 and to authorize the withdrawal of $134,748 from the Ambulance Operation Fund as previ previously established under RSA 31 colon 95C for the purpose of funding the ambulance personnel wages, ambulance supplies and equipment, training, and vehicle fuel and maintenance. This appropriation is covered by the revenue from the ambulance insurance payments and there will be no funds raised from general taxation. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen five to zero and by the budget committee four to one. Who moves the article? Mr. Carr, second. Mr. Hussey, I don't care to speak in favor of the article. Mr. Hussey. Excuse me. <clears throat> Again, pretty self-explanatory here. Uh, this uh, appropriation is covered by revenue from the ambulance insur insurance payments, and there will be no funds raised for general taxation. I did a misread on that article. If you notice down the bottom, the appropriation is recommended by the selectmen five to zero, and by the budget committee, I should have said four with one abstention. Any further discussion on Article 28? Hearing and seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 28? So moved. Mr. Carr, second. second. Mr. Hussey. Uh, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 28, raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 28 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 29, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $36,000 for the purpose of purchasing and equipping a new or used command utility vehicle for the fire department. This sum, 36,000, to come from fund balance surplus and no amount to be raised from new taxation. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 
7VI and will not lapse until completed or by December 31st, 2012. The appropriation is recommended by the selectmen 5 to 0 and by the budget committee 4 with one abstention. Who moves the article? Mr. Hussey, second. Mr. McMahon, who would care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. McMahon. Yes, uh, currently the fire department does not have a command vehicle. Uh, these guys are using their own personal vehicles to go around in that. Uh, this will be used to carry equipment to places, to help with extra hoses, to bring them from a hydrant might be halfway down the street, to help roll out this stuff. He'll also use it for, um, he'll be using it to do inspections when a new house goes in or a new boiler heating system. He'll be using it for things like that. So I uh, hope that everybody will vote for this. Any discussion on Article 29? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 29? Mr. Hussey, second. Mr. McMahon, um, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 29, raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 29 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 30, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be added to the Alton Fire Station Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen 5 to 0 and by the Budget Committee 4 with 1 abstention. Who moves the article? Mr. McMahon, second. Mr. Bolster, who would care to speak in favor of the article? Mr. Carr. This is again to increase or, or excuse me, to stab, uh, add to the capital reserve fund that will be used to address some of the needs of the fire, central fire station. Um, I think we went over some of this last year. Some of, the, some of the areas need some work, especially we have doors that are very drafty. Um, they're also looking in the future to add uh, office space they would give them some of the training space and abilities and some dorm space on that uh, building. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 30? Hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 30? Mr. McMahon, a second. Mr. Bolster, all in favor of restricting reconsideration of Article 30, please raise your cards. Those opposed? Article 30 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Article 31, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be added to the Bridge Replacement Capital Reserve Fund as previously established. The appropriation is recommended by the Selectmen, 5 to 0, and by the Budget Committee, 5 to 0. Who moves the article? Mr. Bolster, second. Mrs. Johnson. Would care to speak in favor of the motion? Mr. Bolster. This fund is a fairly regular fund um, that people are asked for each year. And the reason for this is that whenever a bridge is red listed, now red listed doesn't mean the bridge is falling down, but it means that it is going to need to be uh, replaced uh, within five, six years. We had one bridge, Places Mills, that we took care of this last year, and we had just red listed the Reed Road Bridge. And all of a sudden, this hurricane came through and created these big holes in the bridge, and it was condemned by the state, and we had to do something right away. Very fortunately, FEMA and DES and DOT and our engineers and our town road people, along with the selectmen, were able to work very quickly to make sure that we got that bridge rebuilt quickly. DOT 
Even though we were not at the point where we had come to the top of the list to have that bridge a part of the project, they moved that bridge up because we had money in this reserve fund. If we don't have money in this reserve fund, we cannot, we could not be put on the list that may take as long as five years to get the bridge rebuilt. And so we have to continue to replenish this fund so that if something comes up, an emergency comes up, uh, right now some of this money for this year will actually go into the Reed Road uh, Bridge because we have depleted the funds that we have there. Uh, and others will go in to build this fund back up so that if another bridge uh, goes on the red list, uh, we can get on the list for repair as quickly as possible. Thank you. Any discussion on Article 31? Hearing and seeing none, do we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 31? Mr. Bolster? Second? Mr. Johnson? All in favor of uh, restricting reconsideration of Article 31, raise your cards, please. Those opposed? Article 31 is restricted regarding reconsideration. Folks, we're going to take a 10-minute break right now. And uh, 10 minutes only. Come on back. We'll finish the work in the evening. Yeah.